stayed on your to-do list for like years, <laughs> sometimes decades? Well, Marie has been asking me for months now when we can do a puppet show that has been on the to-do list for about 20 years, maybe longer. So that's going to happen today. And so if you have a joy or concern, come on up now because we're cut out a few things in the bulletin to make space and place for the puppet show. So if you have a joy or concern to share, please come forward. Uh, in terms of normal joys and concerns, uh, we have three book studies that will be going on concurrently, which is amazing for a church of us. Today after church, we look at the book Sacred Seasons and reflect on some of the poetic reflections of Beverly Manzetta. That will be in the library about 15 minutes after our worship service ends. Also coming up is a book study on October 8th entitled With or Without God by a Canadian minister, Greta Bosper. And it's really a look at why how we live is more important than what we believe. So it's a book about ethics and ethical reflection. In other announcements, uh, cookies or cupcakes will be needed next Saturday for the memorial service for Nancy. So if you can do a little extra baking on Friday or Saturday morning, that would be much appreciated. Coming up. Or use the microphone, either one. Okay. I'm Pam, and I wanted to um, share my joy that my son-in-law, the tumors are all gone. Yeah. He had like five or six of them. And the tumors are all gone. He is at this point cancer-free and will be in maintenance mode, which means um, immunotherapy every three weeks for the rest of his life. So anyway, very excited and very happy to share this news with you. Thank you for being here. Good morning, Carolyn. Um, GIVEN, which stands for Grand Valley Interfaith Network, is sponsoring uh, collections for five different agencies in the Grand Valley. I know you're looking at me and saying in your head, as I did at the meeting on Thursday, I have already bought enough green beans, enough pasta sauce, enough pasta to feed an entire army. And here we've got more collections. Yes, um, there are five agencies. Each has their own individual needs, which are stapled to bags, grocery size bags. Um, if it looks like a lot, it is. So find somebody that you can share a bag with, or keep in mind that you don't have to put everything that's on the list in the bag. Uh, or take a bag to your next book study group or something. But let's do what we can. There are 20 bags. They're on the table in Fellowship Hall. And give what you can. Like I say, you don't have to fill the bag, and you don't have to put everything that's on the list in the bag. But whatever you bring would be greatly appreciated. The collection day is the 14th of October. You can follow the directions on the white piece of paper or bring them to the church anytime, and I will take them over on the 14th. Thank you. Hello, I am Tristan. My name is Tristan, and my joy is Rarkon. Is that it, it, it has been um, met. Ah, God, Rarkon is coming up, and for those who don't know, Rarkon is a fundraiser to support the West Middle School Music Group. Music group that, and that I would, that, and I would really appreciate is that some of you donated. Um, that you don't have to donate, obviously, but just it would be, it would be appreciated. Um, if you want to know more, just come find me out in um, at the Mayflower or the Green Halls. I will most likely be there, and yeah, that's it. Um, Brad's stepmother, my mother-in-law, Jeray, who I think a lot of people have met a few times. Have you? Oh, sorry, thank you. Um, Brad's stepmother, my mother-in-law, Jeray, uh, was going to be visiting us this weekend, but she was out for a walk in her neighborhood last week and fell and got 
depression and was in the hospital overnight. So um, she's she's okay. I talked to her last night, but she's still feeling you know lights really bothering her, and she needs a lot of sleep. So if you can keep her in her, your thoughts, Jolene Anderson, and I know a lot of people have met her. She's she's been coming with us for a long time. Work with me in the invitation to worship. Whoever you are, wherever you are, on life's journey, you know you're on the Have you ever felt envy, jealousy? When a co-worker has you easy in a nice corner office, does it bug you a little bit? When someone is paid full-time and you notice they only work part-time, does that hurt you at all? We've seen this and experienced this in many companies. Have you ever thought, hmm, wow, that person is lucky or related to the boss? Either one. Look out for envy because it kills any sense of happiness. Envy undermines that foundation known as contentment. And one of the reasons Jesus was despised by leaders is that he didn't hang out with the rich and powerful and the famous. Instead of making friends with the leaders and the movers and the shakers and the people at the temple, Jesus would hang out with the poor, the sick, the unemployed fishermen, and he would hang out with the people that we put up a fence to keep out of Whitman Park. You know what I'm talking about? So Jesus' answer to those who were envious of his time and attention was, healthy people do not need a physician. Did you catch that? Healthy people do not need a physician. So how did the world change? If we ask the people who are locked out of Whitman Park or other places, what do you need? What do you need? A simple question. That makes a big difference. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. For the last 13 years, federal minimum wage has remained at $7.25. And
Help us to feed the hungry and to ask a deeper question of how we can better distribute food for the none may hunger. Enable us to see also the need of affordable medications for all persons. Let us not pretend that sickness is an individual problem in an era of ever-evolving viruses. Open our hearts with compassion for workers who struggle to cover the bills with minimum wage jobs. And let us be attentive to what it means when workers ask for an increase over five years after CEOs simply gave themselves millions in bonuses and stock options. Help us to view the world with a heart that has the courage to ask, what do you need? Grant us the light that comes when we try to see the world through the eyes of compassion. We pray this as Jesus taught us to pray when he led us by saying, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. We are in covenant with God and joined in community with one another. Let us give of our resources as those who live for all the good and well-being of all.
God of mercy, use our gifts to energize the church to work for mercy in our community and our world. Let our gifts give voice to justice for all your children of every race and faith. And yes, your children unable to feel faith about anything. Plant within us the longing for every family to be blessed. Amen. The scripture today is from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them to his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same thing. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me to the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to do this last, the same as I give you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last.
and always sticky, but somehow it feels stickier when it's cold and damp. And you know you've contracted with workers to be there at 8.30, and when they get there at 8.30, whew, you are so glad to see them because there was no way you and your two brothers were going to cover five acres. So, they come at 8.30, and you're like ready to throw a party. It's a big relief. Well, and then you start wondering about the rest of the people who said they were going to be there at 8.30. One shows up at 10, and you're, you're feeling a little tinge of judgment. Another shows up at noon, and you don't even want to look at it. You're, you're like, Okay, just go that way. You don't want to look at them. They show up at noon and you're thinking, I've been out here since 6 a.m. And your thought is, your thought is, you know, I really wish I could just show up at noon. And when you hear them talk about how they played poker at 3 a.m., you wish you could have maybe played, not poker, but played until 3 a.m. Also on the farm, what you find out is that the day before the harvest day, if you're a farmer or a family with part of the farm, what are you doing the night before harvest day? You are working in the fields for six hours until it gets dark, and you're already exhausted. So you're feeling resentment for those who come in a little bit later. Now also think of what tension it would cause if you're 88% through the job and the barn is 88% full and then somebody who said they'd be there day 30 shows up. What's your feeling towards that person? Not positive. Not great. Now, I've had heard some terrible excuses for people who didn't show up to work. And I've heard some good excuses for those who didn't show up to work. We had a very important farmhand who was almost like a foreman for us named Frank. And there was a day when Frank didn't show up, and he's usually pretty reliable. So he came in his car about 5.30 on the harvest day, and I go to see, well, what happened? So I go up to Frank, I'm about 13, 12 or 13 years old, and I said, Frank, what happened? And I'm looking into his car, his leg, his left leg is bandaged up, layers, and he has a cane. And Frank says to me, my common law wife shot me in the back of the leg. Now I didn't know what a common law wife was, so I said, Frank, why did your common wife shoot you in the back of the leg? And he looked at me, and he said, boy, you ain't old enough to know the why of that question. <laughs> and that's when I realized the wife and her aim was probably just a little low and to the left. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And finally, when the light bulb went off and I figured that out, I said to Frank, I said, Frank, if you had showed up last night when you promised to work for those six hours, you would have been too exhausted to get shot in the leg. <laughs> so when you deal with labor problems and issues, it is a chronic issue in terms of farmers and farming. And you hear good excuses and you hear bad excuses. But you never want to see someone show up at 5 o'clock on a harvest day. When we see this, what do we realize about this story? First, it's very un-American. This story is very un-American. It fits no model of our global capitalism. Frankly, you look at it and you realize it doesn't meet the standards of US labor laws. And both billionaire CEOs and regular workers would not like it. As we read the scripture, we perhaps need to realize that Jesus, oddly enough, was not an American. Contrary to what churches in Texas may tell you. His value system doesn't fit the model of American capitalism. His ethics leave us stunned 
and amazed because he defies the model of fairness that most of us hold in the back of our mind. We want a God who rewards us for our efforts and counts the hours as we count the hours. We have created a culture that sincerely believes in working for a living. And if people are not working, we immediately jump to the conclusion that they are what? Lazy. Lazy. As opposed to living in an area where the factories have all closed. We attack the notion of the welfare model, but fail to notice the billions of dollars that are given to billionaires and billion dollar corporations in tax breaks and tax cuts. We have welfare for millionaires and struggles for those who can't make ends meet. So this parable confronts our own cultural blindness and our capacity to associate work with work. And we're psychologically conditioned to think of work with work. We're conditioned to believe this. But Jesus saw a little different reality, perhaps a deeper reality. So how would this parable be translated into our context today? How would it fit into 2023 in this region? If I were telling the parable today, here's how it would go. A farmer in Palisades needs help with the peach harvest. And he drove down to the Home Depot where men had gathered looking for day labor. And he agreed to pay them a wage of $200 for the day's work. He picked up four more men at 9 a.m. And they also got started harvesting the peaches. About 10 o'clock, he realized he needed more help, so he drove back down and picked up four more men. Once more at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, he realized that he needed more baskets. He went to Home Depot. He saw people still standing there, people who had nothing to eat or drink all day. He said, come on, I'll give you work. And then, finally at 6 p.m., he's driving past Home Depot on the way to pick up a stack of pizzas for the workers. And he sees four more people who have been there since early crack of dawn in the morning who have just been standing there. So he invites them for the final hour of labor. At 7 p.m., all the peaches have been harvested for that day, and they gather to share pizza. The farmer watched his workers as they ate the pizza like starving wolves. They didn't even bother to wash their hands before grabbing a slice. That's how hungry they were. And then the farmer did something amazing. He listened to the workers' conversation. And what did he learn in listening? They all, each one of them had a family. And you should have heard some of the stories. Some were going to use the money they were paid that day just to buy food to get through the next week. Others had a child who needed socks because they didn't have any socks and they were rubbing blisters in the back of their foot. Another had a wife who was ill and could not even afford generic medications. Still another worried, where would they find the money to help their family in another country? Well, the orchard owner watched the pizza just quickly disappear. And he was shocked because even the veggie pizza was wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> and he was even more stunned that people ate pizza with pineapple chunks on it. It should be illegal outside of Hawaii. Now, he finally realized that every one of these people had families and every one of them was struggling just to do what? Just to survive, just to get through another week. Well, this revelation created a moment of grace in his life. He knew that each dollar he gave would be used to sustain the very breath, the very breath of life. So in this moment of grace, after listening to these day laborers, he had a revelation. And they weren't simply hired hands, they were children of God. And he went into his home, a different person. He realized that all these people were different from himself, but in the heat of day, they sweat. And when they lift and carry things, their arms ache and their backs hurt.
hurt. We hug her, they grab pizza without even taking time to wash their hands. The next thing he realized was he was going to have to pull out extra cash. And into every worker's hand, he placed a white envelope with $200 inside. Didn't take the workers long to open up those envelopes and start grumbling. Start the counting process. Something was amiss. How could we all be paid the same amount? How can that be fair when some have worked all day long and others showed up for 58 minutes and 30 seconds and don't think we were counting? Cries of injustice and confusion arose. They said to the farmer, this does not add up. Clearly, some people deserve more. And the owner explains that everyone received what they agreed to. He didn't give anyone less. He didn't tell anyone after the first group what he would pay. It was not a matter of fairness. Rather, Jesus reflects in this parable a strange twist. When he says, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. A little twist that tells us this parable is about love, about mercy, about grace. And when we think about it, do we ever get exactly what we deserve, good or bad? In this faith tradition, Jesus had people who had been faithful Jewish Orthodox believers who were circumcised on the eighth day at the temple and had lived good moral lives, and yet he was paying attention not to the good religious people, but to the poor, the weak, the sick, the handicapped, those who were facing numerous burdens. And he was teaching a strange lesson that this is a rabbi who says God's love is for all people, even those who haven't gone to temple, even those who haven't lived a respectable life. And others thought, what kind of craziness is this? The story undermines our sense of capitalism, of worth. It reminds us that God is not fair, and yes, life is not fair. The day is coming. We will all rejoice that no one gets what they deserve. Amen.
Good morning. Why do we go to church? How does it help us or anybody else in our day-to-day -day lives? Before you are six members of a church. They each have something to say about being part of the church and how the church, believing in God, following the teachings of Jesus, help them and live their lives each day. Hi, I'm Mindy. You won't believe what happened to me today. I was sitting on a bench waiting for the bus when a group of girls my age showed up to wait for the bus. This one girl told me hello. She said, my name's Sally, and I told her my name is Mindy, and I asked her how her day was going. I thought everything was fine, but then I heard her friend say to her, you know, she's one of those type of girls. I got nervous, because it wouldn't have been the first time I got harassed because I'm gay and have a girlfriend. But then Sally said to her friend, what do you mean? What kind of girl is she? Her friend answered with a hateful tone. You know, she doesn't date boys. She dates girls. Oh, said Sally. So why do you think it's okay to be mean? Look at all of us. We're different. We have different colored eyes, hair. We come in different sizes, and even our skin is different. I still like you, even though you have freckles. Everybody's different in some way, whether we can see the difference or not. Then Sally's friend said, well, the Bible says it's wrong. It's a sin. Really? You go to the same church I do. And didn't you get the message from the first story in the Bible? If you remember, it says that God created everything. All humankind, animals, plants, the whole universe. And when he was finished, he said everything he made was good. So why would you think you're better than any other person when God created all of us? Then I noticed a change in attitude. Maybe one of two of the girls were still uncomfortable, but they started talking to me. And it made me feel good. And I think it made them feel Bottles, but they can make bricks that have a small 
smooth surface. I love to garden and plant flowers. Do you also like to plant flowers? My garden attracts bees and butterflies, which help pollinate other plants, so we can enjoy the beauty and wonderful smells that plants produce. I am excited that people are working on how to make our homes more comfortable using less energy and also making automobiles that decrease air pollution. God gave us such a wonderful place to live and God is trusting us to take care of the world. The love takes the human kind and put them in the garden of Eden's world and spank Oh, Lordy, what a day. <laughs> Hello there. I need to stop watching the news. It makes me sad to see how people treat others. I guess I should tell you that my name is Lizzie. My husband and I joined this church a long time ago. It's a wonderful place to be with friends who care about each other. There are so many people who are hurting others, but I haven't given up hope. A long time ago, a friend told me that he truly believes that all people are basically good. Since I believe the lesson Taught in the creation story, I will agree with him. Every day I pray that those who harm others will come to the realization that they need to embrace and follow Jesus' example and will change their behavior. I really prefer to focus on the good that people do. For example, the other day, I heard a story about a man who was driving his car when he saw a teenage boy walking without a coat. It was cold. Grinchy, he did not hesitate. He pulled over, got out of his car, and gave the young man his coat. Would you give someone your coat if you needed one? There are those who volunteer who go into the community to help those that need work, help with yard work, or take food and comfort to those who have lost someone they love. There are so many people who take the time to buy and donate food for the hungry and volunteer to work in the soup kitchen so they can have a hot meal. There are those who come forward when people need places to get out of the cold. They provide hospitality and food in our church when we open our doors to the homeless. We have many who provide school supplies to the children who need them. They also provide clothing, shoes, and personal items. We are proud to march for equality and the safety of all. The Pride Parade, Black Lives Matters, and we march to protect, protest gun violence. We stand up to protect the personal rights of all people. We vote with our values against those who would harm citizens in our country. If you are over 18, do you register and go vote? I am proud to be a member of this church who 
shows God's love by embracing the statement, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, a stranger, needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? Jesus will reply, I truly, truly tell you that whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Good morning, everyone. I was not sure I was going to make it here this morning. My youngest, Susie, woke up in a grumpy mood. Thank goodness her older sister can make her laugh and get her going. During the week, I go to work, get meals for the kids, and take them to school and daycare. I want my children to participate in different programs which take time and keep them busy. It is nice to come to church and be able to sit and have some moments of quiet reflection. It's nice to be with others who worship a God I believe. I love my kids, and I know the people of the church love them, too. They make them feel welcome. Church is a place where I can bring my children to learn about love, kindness, forgiveness, and respect. They can learn that God's love is always with them. All the lessons taught by Jesus to his followers are taught to my children in their Sunday school classes. They enjoy participating in many activities such as art projects, outdoor activities, and sharing with others. It gives them a chance to know that there is an extended family who cares and loves them. This church supports the values that I want my children to have as they grow into adulthood. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, or to you such belong to the kingdom of God. Hi, my name is Maddie. I want to talk a little bit about my faith, and the best way for me to share that is to talk about my own life. You know, life is a wonderful gift, but sometimes it doesn't always feel like that. I lost my father when I was only three years old. My sister and my brother were very young, too. None of us remember very well. But what I do remember is how sad my mother was. One night, we were all having trouble sleeping. So Mom gathered us all up, and we took a walk outside under the stars. I remember Mom seems really at peace that night. I'm not sure I could have explained it at the time, but I knew God was with us. I mostly have really good memories of my childhood and my adult life. I married and had my own kids. Mostly things were good. But one thing that never escaped us were periods of loss, friction, and fear. We lost family members during childbirth, we were, there were accusations of abuse, there were heart attacks. Sometimes they were really rough. I also remember a time when I was working in a church and the pastor, whose kindness helped me through some really rough times to keep my sanity, told me I should write a soap opera about my life. <laughs> Humor does help you get through the really hard times. Now I'm a great grandma, raising two children. Unfortunately, my granddaughter made some really bad choices. So her kids live with me now. At least I know they're safe and will grow up to be healthy and happy adults. I pray every night for their mother, hoping that she finds her way back. I've learned, though, that it's through these tough times that I know I can count on my faith and the love and support of my church family. That day is welcome. Do not, I, for well, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for 
for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. No, now is not the time to talk about your shoes. I saw them. When I saw a child lost and could not find a way, I saw a neighbor get him home. I saw love. When I saw a teacher take the time and with patience, I saw love. And when I saw a stranger stop on the highway and rescue a dog, I saw love. When I saw a newborn child being held by the mother and the father, I saw love. When I saw those who took time to give aid to an elderly person, I saw love. When I saw a minister hold at a child, and he was baptized, I saw love. When I saw people giving clothing to those in need, I saw love. When I saw a person stood with one who had lost a family member, I saw love. And when I saw kind acts done by unselfish people, I saw love. And I believe when you, when you see acts of love, you see the face of God. So we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in them. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so ends our narrative. Thank you, Publicers, and thank you all for your